You just you just kind of print whatever the fuck you want, and then the proof comes later. Or it doesn't. Mm. Who cares, right? We move that paper, baby. That's what it's about. It's all about them subs. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> That's what these guys are doing. Sidebar, uh, please make sure you like, share, and subscribe this stuff. Uh, very important. <laughs> Very important. Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Forkful of Noodles. I'm your host, Chris Mohan. Hey, you guys might notice that uh, you, you, you hear a little bit of laughter in the background of these, uh, of these videos, of the Forkful of Noodles videos, and that's because these videos were recorded in front of a live virtual audience. That's right. I perform these, these shows over Zoom in front of a virtual audience that uh, laughs and participates through the show and it's a really fun time and if you uh, want to be a part of that show you totally can you can go to my website krishmohanhaha.com and snag tickets for these shows i do them once a month on the last friday of every month at 8 p.m eastern at 5 p.m pacific they're ten dollars but if ten dollars is a little bit too much if you're struggling financially and you still want to come check out this show that's not a problem uh, reach out to me, send me an email, DM me on Twitter, send me a message on Facebook, various different ways you can communicate with me. Let me know that you want to check out the show and, and you've hit some financial hard times, and I will get you a free code for the show so you can come, hang out, enjoy a, 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 a comedy show that addresses issues that you won't hear on corporate mainstream media, uh, and, and, and be around some like-minded, wonderful people. Uh, so again, if you go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com, you can snag your tickets and join the live virtual comedy shows that happen every single month. Thank you guys so much, and enjoy this video. Hello, everybody. Uh, so a quick little announcement before we get into the, uh, the episode about the Tulsa Race Massacre. I apologize for... Uh, a little extra preamble, but um, so the first five minutes are going to be in this format where it's not recorded in front of a live virtual audience. And the reason for that is during the show, um, there was a little bit of an audio glitch and I spent uh, quite a bit of time trying to figure out how to get rid of the audio glitch. It was basically some feedback from somebody's microphone and um, I, I, I spent a, a long time trying to figure out how to fix that, but unfortunately, I was not able to fix it. I don't have an audio engineer. Um, I don't have a, a producer on the show. It's all kind of run through me and the audience that takes part in the show. So the audience is the one that's like, hey, we're hearing some feedback, we gotta get rid of it. Um, and, and they did call it out, but unfortunately, it, it, it took them a little while. So. Uh, the first ne first few minutes of the show, the first few minutes of this episode are going to be in this format where you're not really going to hear some la laughter, and then I will transition it into uh, the virtual show. Now again, if you would like to, if you would like to help me get to the point where I can uh, pay a producer, pay an audio engineer and a video engineer uh, to help me with these videos, you can, you can become a sustaining member or make a one-time donation over at krishmohanhaha.com slash donate. Uh, those, those, will, those will help out quite a bit. Uh, so uh, without any further ado, let's dive into this week's episode. Human rights. It's one of the justifications that America uses to launch wars and xenophobically attack cultures and races. It's why we hate the likes of China and Russia terror groups with vaguely Middle Eastern names and people that like Christmas, people that dislike Christmas, and continue to condemn socialism. Now the question is, does America have the moral high ground to be judge, jury, and executioner when it comes to human rights violations? The answer is no. The end. Good night, everybody. That's the show. Let's all go home. No, I'm kidding. I'm of, of course kidding. But and, and look, all right, before everybody starts freaking out and telling me that, well, if you don't like it here, you can just 
go back to your own country. Uh, thank you for approving my point about xenophobia. But I do have proof that America has no legs to stand on when it comes to human rights violations. And before we do, can I just address that ludicrous statement real quick? Right? Anytime someone tells me to go back to my own country, I usually say, you first, pilgrim. And when they shake off the confusion of hearing a brown man quote John Wayne, America's manliest man that's ever manned a manhood, I remind them that Americans are descendants of immigrants who brutally stole this land from the indigenous. This country technically belongs to the indigenous people who lived and worked with the land rather than on it using slave labor. And that's where this particular story of America's human rights violations really begins. The Tulsa Race Massacre is connected to the passage of the Dawes Act, which gave the American government the right to divide native lands. Good. I mean, I was getting real worried that we'd never make Manifest Destiny into a law, but finally, somebody has done it. Right? But this did allow newly freed black people to get their promised 40 acres of land. Between 1865 and 1920, Oklahoma had the largest population of black people in the country. And Oklahoma wouldn't be a state without black people. They were the railroad workers, cowboys, and sharecroppers that built the foundation of the state. Actually, come to think of it, most states wouldn't be a state without the help of black people. Several black entrepreneurs helped the community of Greenwood, aka Black Wall Street, in North Tulsa flourish. O.W. Gurley built a boarding house for black Americans. Gurley would often loan money to black Americans who would use it to start a business in the Greenwood district. He would help these businesses grow and expand so that people could enjoy what the business had to offer. Which, I mean, what a mook, am I right? I mean, you don't loan people money to help their business grow. You, you loan people money so that they are indebted to you and you can exploit them for the sake of capitalism. Clearly, Gurley didn't get it. Despite that thought, though, Greenwood did become one of the most successful areas in all of Tulsa. J.B. Stanford, a former slave turned into a lawyer and activist, believed that black people need to pool their resources together and uplift their communities. And look, this was a very dangerous thought because it does sound like a commie pinko Russia Putin traitor talk. In capitalism, the only pool you need to worry about is the in-ground one built by exploiting the working class. But the successes of Greenwood came exactly because of that. One dollar would circulate through the community of Greenwood anywhere from 19 to 100 times before it was spent on a white-owned business outside Greenwood. And for the kids who understand, that would be like keeping your Venmos in the community for a fortnight. Hashtag YOLO. Am I right? Huh? You guys get it, right? Um, is it is this cool? Am I cool? Is this cool? Are you? Are the kids getting it? Greenwood also had its own school system with a better education than the white schools. There was a business college, banks, two theaters, salons, nightclubs, hotels, and even a functioning public transportation system. There are towns in America right now that don't have a decent bus system, Pittsburgh, uh, <laughs> and in towns that do, people don't use the transportation because the bus smells weird. Well, maybe if we had a funded actual funded public transportation system more buses trains and trams would have better ventilation and maybe even a bathroom right? I, I think we have a very backwards way of dealing with transportation in this country right i think cars should be used for long distance travel but if you're moving when, within a city public transportation should be readily available and better funded 
and they and they probably wouldn't smell as bad either if they were funded well. Wouldn't be a problem. Now, Greenwood even had its own newspaper called the Tulsa Star. This was founded by A.J. Smitherman, and it educated the citizens of Greenwood about their rights and would often cover pieces of legislation that are either beneficial or harmful to black Tulsans. They'd cover stories that involved things like Oklahoma's first piece of legislation, which involved instating segregation into the state. Ah, yes. The fun things of signing discrimination into law, just like a democracy should, right? <laughs> yeah. Gotta do it by the rules. <laughs> after the Constitutional Congress, after state it was approved, the first bill, the first bill segregated the state. Despite this bill by the new government, blacks remained in Oklahoma, living in both all black towns and Oklahoma's cities. One of those cities was Tulsa. You know that bill is evil because of that music. Very sinister music. This legislation segregated Tulsa into a black north and a white south because you don't want to mess with classic racism, right? You know? <laughs> Much like New Coke, new racism is going to be weird and will it will make you gassy. <laughs> and again... What a mook, right? A.J. Smitherman trying to teach people about legislation that is going to be beneficial or harmful to them. Okay, look, newspapers are not supposed to do that. They're supposed to tell you which billionaire to fawn over, right? How, how Russia is bad and where the hottest sales are happening, right? The, the Tulsa Star didn't even have any commercials, and they didn't try to justify any wars either. It's, it's like they don't even get what corporate journalism is supposed to be about, you know? Where is the propaganda? You're, you're just educating the plebes, you fool. It's ridiculous. Now, the Tulsa Star also advocated for an armed black populace and taught folks how to protect themselves, which is, like, weird because wow. it's, yeah, it's almost like they understand the responsibility of owning a firearm and what well-regulated means, you know? I bet, I bet the, the Tulsa Star understood comma placement, unlike the Second Amendment, who used commas like a first grader who just discovered what punctuations were. <laughs> it's, a, it's a pretty fucked up amendment, you guys. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> now, one might think that the paper was being alarmist, but this was the early 1900s when the Ku Klux Klan was still powerful and very violent partly because the Republican Party had shifted its views on the KKK. The party went from demonizing the Klan and hunting them out of communities to be friendly with them after McKinley turned the GOP into the party of big business and bosses. Now, Greenwood's successes had caught the ire of the white communities, right? Most of these white folks were low to middle class, uh, middle, middle class working people that were working in the booming oil industry at that time. The economic solidarity of Greenwood was a threat to white bosses who were using racism as a way to keep their wealth intact. I mean, this is classic capitalism, right? It, which is a little different from new capitalism, which is basically the exact same thing as classic capitalism, but like in a new suit and slightly more gassy. But this is a classic method of exploitation, right? To convince white workers the reason they're poor isn't the greed of the bosses, but rather the black men and women who hoard their rightful wealth. <laughs> it's the dangerous mix of racism, manifest destiny, and white supremacy that is still used to this day. Yeah, This is the origin of the immigrant stole my jobs myth. So... Mm. White Tulsans were basically looking for any excuse to attack the thriving black community of Greenwood. And they found that excuse in Dick Rowland in 1921. Now, a good amount of Greenwood residents had to work in the greater Tulsa area and were in the oil business. But there were some who were inspired by the entrepre entrepreneurial spirit of Greenwood and started their own smaller enterprises. Dick Rowland was a 19-year-old shoe shiner in Tulsa and made a pretty decent wages one. 
And because of segregation, there was only one black bathroom in the city. It was in the Dexter building. And when Dick Rowland entered the building and got on the elevator with the operator, a white woman named Sarah Page, residents claim they heard Sarah scream and Dick Rowland run away. Now, Rowland is arrested for potential sexual assault and is kept in prison. To this day, nobody knows exactly what happened in that elevator. The most likely explanation is that Roland tripped and fell into Sarah Page, call causing her to scream in shock. But the Tulsa Tribune decided to run a very different story. The Tulsa Tribune ran a story titled Nab Negro for Attacking Girl in Elevator. This inflammatory article strongly implies that Dick Rowland, a black man, had raped the young white elevator operator, Sarah Page. 3.15 p.m., the newspaper hits the streets of Tulsa. Now these guys get what journalism is about, huh? You know? Right. You just, you just kind of print whatever the fuck you want, and then the proof comes later. Or it doesn't. Mm. Who cares, right? We move that paper, baby. That's what it's about. It's all about them subs. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> That's what these guys are doing. Sidebar, uh, please make sure you like, share, and subscribe this stuff. Uh, very, imp <laughs> very important. <laughs> also... <laughs> I gotta say, this kind of makes Tulsa Tribune America's very first tabloid, right? The next story they ran was about Woodrow Wilson's underwear mm, and mm, mm, whether mm. Bigfoot is real or not. Uh, mm, mm, mm. Spoiler alert, he is not. Probably. Aww. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe, I don't you know. You don't I, mean that, Chris Mohan. You I don't, don't mean that. It's a comedy <laughs> show and that's a joke. Dream crusher. <laughs> That's the most controversial statement I'll make. Like people will be, <laughs> people will leave comments about their proofs of Bigfoot. <laughs> but they're uh, back, back to Tulsa. Uh, as a mob of white Tulsa started surrounding the sheriff's department, Sheriff William McCullough and his men barricaded the sheriff's office and were assisted by anywhere from twenty-five to seventy-five armed black men from Greenwood. Most of these black men were World War I veterans. After a white Tulsan tried to take a black Tulsan's gun away, a shot is fired, which erupts the race riot. Overwhelmed by the number of white folks, the black folks retreated back to Greenwood to try and regroup. The lynch mob of angry white folks, who were now deputized by city officials and the Tulsa police, charged into Greenwood and proceeded to destroy the town and kill anyone who didn't look like them. This was basically like the purge, if the purge was also racist. Which, it doesn't have to be, like the purge is bad enough as it is. We don't really need to add racism to it, but boy howdy, did they do it anyway. You know. <laughs> The lynch mob was arresting black people and imprisoning them in a ballpark. I remember men taking my father to a place where they kept prisoners at Levin and Elgin, McNulty Park. Other than that, I never saw my father anymore during the race ride. I just remember my mother taking care of us. You know, uh, locking people up and using a baseball park as, as a prison really makes mass incarceration America's favorite pastime, doesn't it? Damn. <laughs> 1,256 houses were burned. 215 houses were looted, and the business district faced irreparable damage. 21 churches, 21 restaurants, 30 mm. grocery stores, two movie theaters, plus a hospital, a bank, a post office, Jeez. library, schools, law offices, and half a dozen private planes, and even the bus system was destroyed. Perhaps, perhaps the reason why these buses smell so bad is that 
They're all just covered with this stench of racism. <laughs> that is not a fun smell. <laughs> Look, this is this is basically why we can't have nice things, you know. Because instead of asking if they can be part of something awesome, jealous, propagandized white folks will just tear things apart. There were even reports of airport airplanes flying over the town, dropping kerosene to spread the fire. And firefighters say that they were threatened by the mob if they tried to put the fire out. They threatened to kill firefighters for trying to do their job. Eventually, the Oklahoma National Guard was called in to stop the riot after roughly 12 hours. Right, Upwards of 6,000 black citizens were arrested by the National Guard. The white citizens were disarmed and sent home, which some people see as a bigger injustice than wrongfully arresting innocent people of color. The Guard ended up putting black citizens in an internment camp and would only release anyone if a white employer could vouch for them. Yeah, And these released black folks were marked with green tags. Now the Nazis Jeez. heard about this and they were like, well, that's an interesting idea. Uh, Boy, yeah. these Americans, they really, they're good. They're good with ideas is what they are. We should really be paying attention. Stars to would be fun. <laughs> stars, Let's yeah. do stars, Klaus. <laughs> yeah. 9,000 black Tulsans were left homeless after this event, and no one is actually certain about how many people were killed in this massacre committed by, enraged, uh, by an enraged white lynch mob. But there were many bodies buried in a mass grave or thrown down a coal mine. Now, this coal mine eventually became a Sears parking lot, which really explains the fate of Sears. Just in case anybody knows, I'm pretty sure Sears is shut down. Like, it's not a thing anymore. Oh, God. <laughs> After this event, the Tulsa Tribune ran the story in the front page, and a lot of white Tulsans were selling postcards of the destruction because capitalism gives zero fucks about anything except profits. Right. Mm -hmm. The New York Times... And Tulsa World also ran stories, but public opinion of this event was not as celebratory as one would expect. Because even in 1921, lynch mobs and racial violence, very unpopular. Super unpopular. I don't think there's ever been a moment in history where people were like, boy, you know what we need is more lynch mobs. Boy, <laughs> that's what society is really fucking missing. And in fact, the political and business leaders realize what a PR nightmare this is to celebrate a massacre like this. And just to be clear, they were cool with the massacre, just not celebrating it publicly. You know, you do it quietly and privately like God intended. So instead of making a statement to get rid of the Klan or reverse segregation in Tulsa, they hid the story. The Tulsa Tribune deleted the story from their front page. The Tulsa World erased all records of it, and even the proud white lynch mobbers fell completely silent. When in doubt, folks, sweep racial massacres under the very expensive mm -hmm. rug made out of an endangered mm -hmm. species. Mm -hmm. Look, I don't really care who I offend with this statement, but if you're a capitalist, you're morally bankrupt. That's, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. I mean, for decades, people from the future generations didn't know what happened to Greenwood. No history books wrote about it, and schools never really ta th uh, taught it. Gee, I, I, I wonder why, right? You know, in Germany, they don't teach the history of Nazism. In Japan, they don't teach the, the, uh, the rape of Nan King. Le leaping a, 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 a gaping hole for history to just repeat itself despite your quiet shame. And the only reason this story even broke and hit the mainstream was because the mass graves were discovered in 1998. Eventually, a bill is proposed to teach the race massacre in schools, but Oklahoma legislators claimed the bill to be bogus because the massacre was already being taught in schools. 
And I'm sure even one of them said, well, look, we teach kids that slavery is bad. What more do you people want? Ridiculous. Yeah, gaslighting the American populace is like America's greatest pastime. But as of 2004, the race massacre is being taught in Oklahoma schools. They also decided on a $33 million restitution, which is nice, but not nearly enough. Right? Greenwood could have been a model for how to run this country, but because uh, a bunch of rich white people and their exploitative racism, we'll never really know how transformative Greenwood could have been. I would wager to bet that there would have been far less poverty, crime, suffering, and racial hatred if Greenwood would have thrived. The people that committed the Tulsa race massacres would have been the same people that said, well, you know, black people should really just comply with the police at the murder of every innocent black person, right? But these white racists are the ones who blatantly didn't comply with the police and wound up genociding a prosperous black community. And that's because their fear and hatred is far more important than authority. A society ruled by ignorance, greed, and exploitation is doomed to fail. No matter how many unmarked graves you bury the truth in, it'll resurface and show us how we squandered a good thing. And that has been your Forkful of Noodles for this week. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure that you hit that like button and hit that share button. Get the word out uh, on YouTube and Facebook. This kind of content is pretty often suppressed and sometimes even gets deleted from their site. So it's very important that uh, you guys hit the like and the shares. That always helps us uh, find new viewers on the algorithm. And if you're trying to subvert censorship, the best place to do that is Rockfin. Uh, Rockfin is the blockchain cryptocurrency video platform site that is all about helping content creators earn an income from what they create. And there's absolutely no censorship on that platform. So if you want to follow me on Rockfin, you can follow me at uh, rockfin.com slash Mohan. Ha ha. And if you want much more content, uh, go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. Uh, you can find all of my stand-up comedy albums there. You can find past episodes of this show. Uh, if you missed a live stream, they're up on the website there. You can catch past episodes of my interview podcast, Taboo Table Talk. And you can make a donation. If, you would, if you're on stable financial ground and you want to help support the show financially, you can do so directly on my website by making either a one-time donation, which acts as uh, you know, some super chats, uh, as it were, or you can become a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets to the virtual and when live comedy comes back, live comedy shows, as well as additional bonus content, which includes stand-up comedy shows. Uh, and you can ask me questions uh, and and leave comments for me as, um, as a sustaining member as well. So once again, you can go do that over at krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H. M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. -H 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 -A. Thank you very much for tuning in, and there will be a new episode next week, so stay tuned.